In the last video, I talked about what magazines and clips were, and I promised I'd make a follow-up video to that. So today we're going to learn about different types of magazines and clips, what makes them useful, what makes them unique, and what some of their limitations are. So let's dive in. When it comes to clips, there are two major kinds, stripper clips and end block clips. As I mentioned in the previous video, stripper clips are small tabs of sheet metal that hold cartridges in place so they can be easily and quickly loaded into a gun's magazine. Just about any old military bolt-action rifle uses stripper clips. End block clips are almost like clip magazine hybrids. They encase the cartridges almost entirely and are placed into the magazine where they stay until the cartridges are fired. The M1 Garand is the most famous example of a weapon using end block clips. The real fun comes in learning about different types of magazines. There are many different kinds, and some of them are quite interesting. But before we get crazy, let's start with the basics. Magazines usually come either in double stack or single stack configurations. This refers to the way that the cartridges are actually held within the magazine. Single stack means that they are laid one on top of the other, single file, whereas double stack means that they're staggered more in a zigzag fashion. In addition to the stacking method is the feeding method, usually being double or single feed. Single feed means that when a cartridge gets to the top of the magazine and it's ready to be pushed into the chamber, it'll be in one position and one position only. Double feed means that the cartridge may be in one of two positions. Just about every magazine out there uses a spring to push the cartridges out the top and into the gun. The cartridges are held in place in the magazine by a pair of feed lips. These function as little arms that prevent the cartridges from being pushed out by the spring. They also help position the cartridges in just the right way so the gun can grab them and chamber them. So now that we understand the basic design and function of a magazine, let's see how these principles are put to use in different ways. Many handguns and subguns use what are called stick mags. Named for their long, slender appearance, stick mags typically hold handgun cartridges and can be inserted into the grip of many handguns, making them convenient and comfortable to transport. Box magazines are similar, with the main difference being that they are wider and often used in rifles. Box magazines can't be held within a gun's grip like stick mags can due to their sheer size. The size of the cartridge dictates the size of the magazine, and since rifle cartridges are typically much longer than handgun cartridges, the mags can't be stowed in any comfortably sized grip, so they're typically placed somewhere along the middle of the weapon. A subtype of the box magazine is the coffin magazine. Coffin mags are quad stack, meaning that they hold two lanes of double stacked cartridges that are funneled towards the top of the magazine. Coffin mags allow for box magazines to hold more ammunition than standard without being much longer, although they are heavier, more awkward to carry, and generally less reliable than standard magazines. Drum magazines, if you can believe it, are drum-shaped. Instead of the typical arrangement of stacking cartridges on top of one another in line, drum mags wind the cartridges up in a wheel parallel to the barrel of the gun. Drum mags hold more ammunition than stick or box mags, but they don't see as much use due to their complexity, general unreliability, and awkward shape. The Thompson submachine gun is perhaps the most famous example of a weapon using drum magazines. Pan magazines also hold the cartridges in a wheel, but instead of laying them parallel like a drum, Pan mags stack the cartridges perpendicularly to the barrel. These magazines are placed flat on top of the weapon, giving the mags the look of a pan or a plate, hence the name. The Lewis gun is a good example of a weapon which uses a pan magazine. Along with the downsides of a drum, pan magazines have an additional con. Depending on how many rounds the mag is designed to hold, it can obstruct the front sight of the weapon and prevent the user from being able to aim properly. Rotary magazines are essentially the same as drums, but instead of allowing the cartridges to press against one another, each cartridge is held in its own individual slot. Think of this kind of like the cylinder to a revolver. Tube magazines are simply tubes in which the cartridges are stacked end-on-end, -end and are commonly used on shotguns and lever-action rifles. This tube is often placed below and along the barrel of the gun, and is fixed in place. A tube magazine's main limitation is the low number of rounds that they can hold. Horizontal magazines, such as those used in the FN P90, are typically placed along the top of the weapon. The cartridges are stacked in the magazine in much the same way they would be in a standard box magazine, but when they reach the top, they are rotated 90 degrees and fed into the weapon. Due to the mechanism required to rotate incoming cartridges, horizontal magazines have more opportunities to malfunction, although the magazine used in the P90 is noted as being exceptionally reliable nonetheless. A notably odd magazine type is the helix. Helical magazines are a bit like drums, except they wind the cartridges up in a spiral. The magazines are placed along the length of the weapon, either on the top or the bottom. These magazines are very seldomly used in any weapon system, partly due to their sheer size and weight, but also due to their complexity and unreliability. If you're starting to feel like a pattern is emerging here, you're right. 
Most firearms use box or stick magazines, and not much else. Mostly because they're simple, they're cheap, and they're reliable. Many Calico brand firearms use helical magazines, but they are some of the only weapons to do so. And those are pretty much the basics. Thank you for watching this video, and if you have any questions or would like to supplement anything that I said, please do so in the comments. As always, I appreciate your time. Stay safe. Have a good day. Keep learning. Class dismissed.